And we're back once again with the Lakers Fast Break Podcast. Take two this time around. It's Gerald Glassford coming right back at you here from Lakers Fast Break. Pop Culture Cosmos, Inside Sports Fantasy Football, and Game Source. We truly appreciate everyone out there listening to all of our shows. And if you can, please give us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Plus, if you can like, share, subscribe, follow, or do anything that you can to support us right here at the Lakers Fast Break, Lakerholics.com. And the awesome place to go for a whole ton of great basketball podcasts, hoopheadspod.com and the Hoopheads Podcast Network, it is sincerely appreciated. Well, the Lakers seemed very, you know, they were, they were just very positive signs coming back from the road trip, four and three, things were looking pretty good. Thought we could go ahead and get a victory to, uh, to victory today against our arch rival, the Boston Celtics. At home for the first time in front of a crowd of about 2,000 people thought, hey, you know what? This is the start of some good things happening because the Lakers have got some real tough games coming up. But unfortunately, that wasn't to be as the Lakers went down as much as 17 points early. They got trashed. They got kicked in the face right, just right from the get-go. And unfortunately, can never just get up back up that hill. And the closest they got was, about, I think, about five points, five-point lead for the Celtics throughout and Jalen Brown was just unbelievably hot 17 out of 20 40 points overall just truly a fantabulous performance from him and the Lakers after a just an 8-0 run that seemingly just knocked the spirit out of them in the fourth quarter ended up losing 121 to 113 but here today to talk about the Lakers game and their I guess their defense was just it just it's still on on the road trip so maybe it'll come back in the next game but here today to talk about the game and also some good news for the team that's coming up, possibly as early as the first Dallas game coming up next week. He's a good man indeed. You got to check out what he's doing today as far as his articles on Lakerholics.com and Medium.com. It is Laker Tom and Laker Tom. I Like I said, it just looked like their defense had still it, – it's still on the plane coming over here from the East Coast. Well, they're, they were shorthanded, and then uh, Dennis Schroeder basically was a, a late addition. They thought he wasn't going to play. Um, he might as well not have played as he played poorly. Uh, hardly ever drove into the lane. Um, we couldn't hit our threes. We started off terrible. Um, the starting lineup at one point, I think, was minus 39 points, and and the bench was ahead like 32 to 7, so... The bench guys did a good job in the first half. Uh, and then the killer was that that start of the fourth quarter with the Lakers just basically, basically came out totally nonchalant. Uh, at a 10-2 run, eight points in a row, and the game was just blown out like that. Um, and then surprisingly, the Celtics subbed in everybody from their bench. The Lakers proceeded to get hot and hit a bunch of threes and got the game down to six or seven points several times. And the Celtics had the obvious answer. Let's just put Jalen Brown back in the game. Boom, he goes down the court, dribbles through four or five guys, makes a couple of easy layups, and uh, and that put the game away. Um, but the good news is that uh, Anthony Davis is uh, released now for full court contact. Uh, they think there's a good shot that he'll maybe make one of the game, maybe the second game against Dallas. Um, and that's good news we could really use. Um, I would say one guy I thought had an excellent offensive game was Mark Gasol. And uh, I almost I almost felt like they held out Andrew, Dr- Andrew Drummond on purpose in this particular game. Um, I know he said he got his foot stepped on in the Nets game, but um, I wrote an article the other day saying that uh, it was time for them to, for these five games, that Gasol was going to be a much better matchup than uh, – then putting Drummond in there, um, Gasol didn't do a great job on defense. Um, uh, but at the same token, uh, he really stretched the floor and and he was shooting threes very well. Um, I wish he would be a little more careful with his passes. Um, I don't know whether it's not enough playing time with the guys that are cutting because his passes don't seem to be hitting the spot and so forth. But it was a, one of those discouraging games with the, uh, with a little blip of hope at the end as as uh, LeBron and AD and all of us are rooting for the Lakers to come back and really embarrass the Celtics. Uh, but, man, Jalen Brown, what a game, 17-20. Um, and even the misses that he made were very close. 
the Lakers, the Lakers were schizophrenic tonight. Kuzma would fire an air ball and then fire a long three that would hit the backboard and not hit anything else. And then he'd hit two or three threes in a row. Uh, Macklemore, same thing. He couldn't hit anything until the game was way out of reach. And then all of a sudden he got hot. Um, win one, lose one. That seems to be our token right now. We're on that stretch. So if we continue that, that same spread, I'd be happy over the next four games if we could win the first one against, uh, against the Jazz and then come back and win the first one against the Mavs. I think that would be a good end to this five-game stretch, um, and we'll have to see whether or not we can do that. Um, definitely nice to see some fans in Staples. I mean, I think, what, what does Staples hold, like 12,000 people? No, oh, Staples holds close to 20. Does it hold close, close to 20, really? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. That makes more sense because it looked like it was only about five or ten percent. You know, they didn't have anybody on one side of the stadium, and then when you looked at the people in the stands on the other side, um, it was definitely super social distancing. You know, I mean, it was like forty feet between the, the different parties on it. So, but at least we're starting to we're starting to see fans in the arena again. Um, I noticed some early boos when the bad call was made. Um, I much prefer that than the canned. Uh, crowd noise that they pump in for the broadcasts. Um, but a discouraging game, you know. Um, it was one of those games where, again, I felt right from the start that the Lakers came out thinking they couldn't win the game. And when you come out thinking you can't win the game, chances are you can't win the game. Well, this is a game that they could have taken because with Tatum having an off game and only Jalen Brown being the guy that they, on point, they had every chance and opportunity to go ahead and try to be competitive. In fact, they let them in the game, you know, two or three times when it was down to five points, and you could see that if they just could muster enough offense, they could get yep. the job done. But unfortunately, that wasn't the case. And again, they just didn't find anyone that could stop Jalen Brown. And these are the days where you really miss Anthony Davis, who could just make his life miserable if that's the case. And you just put Anthony Davis on him, and there you go, because there's no nobody else. Right. If Tatum is really struggling like that, there's nobody else on the team that Anthony Davis would have to worry about. So you could go ahead and guard Jalen Brown and and put him at least to make a little bit make his life a little bit more uncomfortable per se. But eh, we'll see. We'll wait and see about as far as what's going on with Anthony Davis. I was told on the radio as I was listening on the radio for the first part of the game that Anthony Davis was expected back possibly as early as the first Mavs game. But you're right; it could be the first or second. We'll see. He's definitely going to be out for the first of the Utah games coming up this weekend and also Monday as well. But he is back. He's been cleared for full contact practice. So that's good news. But here today to talk about the disappointing game today and if the Lakers defense will ever get off the plane is a good man indeed. You got to check out his awesome comments whenever he goes ahead and does so. Plus also everything that he does for us at Lakers Fast Break. It is L. Rob and L. Rob. Great to have you back on the show. Just unfortunately, again, it comes down to defense, which the Lakers are usually the best in the league at. Didn't get it done today. Uh, good to be back, Gerald and, and Tom. Yes, uh, I mean from the very beginning, what do we see? We seen, I think we seen Brown get about three layups, like in the first couple minutes of the game. I mean, I'm talking about straight dives to the basket and. Um, yeah, that kind of set the tone for the whole game. Um, good news was we only had what eight turnovers. So, yeah, hey, <laughs> let's, let's 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 look for the positive. Let's act, accentuate the positives. Only uh, Dennis had, had zero turnovers. That was good. But yeah, Jalen was. I mean, he was incredible. I mean, you know, tip your hat to him. He was incredible. Right, three shots. He only missed three shots, and one of them was a half court heave right before the halftime buzzer, I think, or third quarter buzzer or one of them. So he was good. Um, you know, Tristan Thompson was tough. Um, you know, the basket. Uh, Smart was hitting some threes. So, yeah, they had a pretty, pretty uh, very dynamic offensive game. The only one that really didn't play probably up to his uh, normal capabilities was Tatum. The rest of the Celtics um, looked pretty good, pretty good. So, one of those games after a long road trip, um, you know, I, I don't think the Lakers came out with the mindset that they couldn't beat Boston. I, I don't think they came out like that. I just think Boston took it to them. Boston's playing good, and they came yep. out 
ready to go. And when you don't come out ready to play fully, you know, engage 100%, you get down, you know, a quick 10, 12, 14 points against a good team. Yeah, it's going to be hard to make up that ground. The Lakers, remember, it just came back from the East Coast just two short days ago in Boston, still coming off that high up of winning what, against Denver, against Portland. They've, they've had a very successful West Coast trip, and so they were in L.A. first ahead of the, the Lakers. So they were a little bit more rested than the Lakers, and you could tell that. For me, it was about energy in that first half, and there wasn't much to be had on the Lakers' end. But I also want to give a big shout-out to both Felix and Albert for – Thank you so much for the kind comments and also as well, the thumbs up as well. We truly appreciate everyone watching and listening. Unfortunately, the Lakers did fall short with the last minute run, 121 to 113. But Laker Tom, again, you got to go ahead and say this is something now that they did lose the game. We were hoping they would take because now the, the, the next week is going to get a lot tougher. Yeah. Those next four games are critical. Um, if we, you know, if we get swept in those two series, we could be in the play-in tournament very easily. Um, so it'll it'll be interesting to see the the uh, playing Utah is uh, always a challenge. Um, I think Gasol is a much better fit to play against Gobert than uh, than uh, Drummond. Um, it'll be interesting to see. Maybe Drummond's injury will keep him out, and uh, and we'll get a chance to see Mark. Um, spread the floor, stretch the floor, and and try to draw Gobert out of the paint. Um, I thought we saw a little bit of uh, energy from Trez tonight. He had a better game than his previous games, but he still seems to be struggling sometimes to to get his shot over over people. You know, um, it's going to be you know. We're going to have to hope that we can defend the three a lot better than we've done in recent times because the Jazz are, are one of the best three-point shooting teams in the league, and and uh, it it can get a, it it could get ugly pretty fast if we don't have AD in any of those two games. Um, I thought there was a chance that he would uh, that he could make one of the Jazz games, um, but I guess you've heard a more recent announcement that said he wasn't going to. That's correct, John Ireland from Lakers radio and it was announced with, and he said that the Lakers official statement said that he would not be participating in both Saturday's and Monday's game. And that he is a questionable would be according to Frank Vogel would be right. questionable as far as a Wednesday return against Dallas. So that's maybe, you know, at least that's a maybe. So that's mm -hmm. on the table, but they, they definitely ruled him out of the Utah games. Hmm. Um, I'm hoping gonna I'm be, wrong. It's going to be a tough four wrong. games. It's going to be a tough four games. Yeah, it's going to be a tough four games. We're not being that's that's. I mean, uh, you know, I'm I'm gonna chalk those two up right now. But Dallas will not sweep us. So no, yeah, I mean that's not going to happen either. So Dallas is the is the big games, and just gear up for Dallas, Utah. Um, yeah, I, I just think they're going to be ready and ready to make a provable point, especially without our big big guns in there. So I uh, hope I'm wrong, but I don't see that happening. You're right. I mean, as long as Utah comes in with relatively good health, uh, if they don't sit many of their players out, which they may do on the second of a back-to-back, -back, we'll see for the Monday game. I have a feeling on the Saturday game, they're going to play everybody and they're going to say on Monday, we'll see how it goes from there. If they have an easy time of it on Saturday, they may just sit down Donovan and go bear on Monday because that's the way it's been going. And that's something we could talk about right now is the number of missed games, whether it's through rest or injury. Now, again, on our last program, we did say that overall, the coming into April, the injuries are at a rate similar to what they have been in previous seasons. But I know there's been some articles and also been some inference made that all-stars, as far as the number of all-stars are hurt, and you know this is a star-driven league, as I told you before, Laker Tom, on the DM that I sent along with it, that the percentage of all-stars are getting hurt or missing games, as we're, you know, with, with Kyrie Irving, for instance, he's missing a ton of games due to personal reasons, and you'll see a lot of the others that are just sitting down and getting rest. So I want to ask you this. I mean, this condensed schedule is obviously hurting every team, it's affected the Lakers as far as the injury bug is concerned. Do you see this getting any better anytime soon? No, I think it's there's a chance that it's going to get worse because 
players are tired now, you know, and uh, we're heading into a stretch where a lot of teams are going to, especially with the play in tournament being factored in, a lot of teams are going to want to improve their position, you know, and there's still going to be, they're still going to be fighting in games that in previous years might not have counted at all because the ninth and 10th teams aren't going to, aren't going to be trying hard. Now this year, the ninth and 10th teams, it is going to be a battle for ninth and 10th because it gets you a shot at the playoffs. Um, and then you get into the playoffs and, and that's like a whole second season. Um, we get a brief break from the, from the play in tournament, but even the number one and two seeds, as we talked about in the last podcast, they won't even know who they're going to play until after the play in tournament is done. Yeah. So there's a lot of unknowns going on. There's a lot of injuries. I mean, uh, it just seems like every day you pick up the news and, and look on Twitter and there's some new announcement by, by Shams or Woj that some other player is out for the season. Um, it happens almost every day. It's almost like reading the obituaries uh, during COVID. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's become part and parcel of what the new normal is for the NBA. Um, and I think that, you know, when you, the thing that the thing also that I heard is that when you factor in the the COVID situations where people are out because of the contact tracing and things like that, that that it's really been sporadic. That we still have a chance for this to be the worst year yet. And as far as serious injuries goes, ACLs, um, we've had five guys out with ACLs this year, and then that's the most since 2012. So you're still looking at a very difficult situation and we still have, you know, we still have a lot of, a lot more stress going down to the stretch in these last 15 games that everybody's going to be playing than we normally would have because it's 10, 12 teams now that anybody who's within reach of that play-in tournament is going to be going all out. A lot of those teams, the chance to get into the play-in tournament is the equivalent of the playoffs for them. It gives their young players a chance to, to actually play in games that count. Um, and where last year or, pre- or two years ago, they might have been looking to tank games just in order to improve their draft, their draft position. This year, uh, they're looking for a shot at getting into that ninth or tenth spot. So we'll see what happens. But, you know, for the Lakers, I mean, Marcus Gasol, we didn't even mention that he dislocated his finger during the course of the game. He had it reset. Maybe we'll be there for Saturday. We're not even sure of that because these days they keep them out for any type of reason. You know, yeah. DNP rest also is the main reason. I've seen that with a lot of players. So, El Rob, I want to ask you this. I mean, we're seeing it all over the place. In fact, just COVID is still needs to be an issue because Zach Lafine was just uh, is going to be out for next ten to fourteen days at at the least because of uh, health and safety protocols. And you just heard the news today for Brooklyn that LaMarcus Aldrich immediately retired from the game of basketball due to some heart conditions, which is very scary. So I wish the best for him and his health long term. What are your thoughts on on how this crazy season, this condensed season is, is going? And do you think that it's leading to so many of these problems that we're seeing now? Boy, that's, um, yeah, that's an interesting question. Um yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it has to have some type of impact when you're playing this many games in this short time frame. I mean, you look at KCP, he's a walking – he was like a mummy out there today. Yeah. I, I tip my hat to him for getting out there and giving us whatever he could. But Yeah, yeah, I those mean, back spasms. Yeah, but he was really, really laboring the entire game. So oh, I've had back spasms more than one occasion. Yeah, they it can make yeah. you walking around like a mummy. Yeah, yeah. You, you can't just, play basketball when you got – Back no, when the back is messing with you, you definitely <laughs> yeah. don't want to be trying to run up and down the court. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, I think it's it's definitely um, it has some impact on it. I mean, we we're we're seeing it. Um, so, I mean, nothing you can do about it though. You gotta everybody. It's a level playing field. Everybody's dealing with the same issues. So that's why it pays to have a, a deep bench and some guys you can put in there when you do need to give guys a day off or when you when you get hit by the injury bug like the Lakers has been hit by recently. It's great to have, you know, with Drummond go down, you have a, you know, Casal ready to go out and he steps in and, you know, gives you 18 points on a game, like you know, to at least keep the Lakers in the game for, for a while in third quarter. So um, this next month is going to be interesting because, 
like uh, like Tom said, all these teams are fighting for um, to to get into the play in tournament. So that's going to be a lot of stress on a lot of guys, and uh, you know, hope we don't see many more injuries. But yeah, the, the right now um, the way things are trending does not look good for the health of uh, for the health of the players. So. And and also they got to remember the fact we haven't had a huge uh, loss of games for any team due to, co- to the coronavirus. We've had Dallas missed a few, and a couple other teams have missed a series of games. But they've been able to make a lot of those up, uh, and it's not been something overwhelming like we're seeing in hockey right now with Vancouver, who yeah. uh, I think they're going on their second week, and they need to be extended more. The the league just extended them some more time off because their whole team has been ravaged by, you know, the whole coronavirus. I know here in Vegas, we were ravaged early on in the season by, for the golden Knights here, as far as our team with coronavirus. So we have not had in the NBA, a really long outage for any of these teams. And that's something that could loom on the horizon for as well. Yeah. I know we saw it in college basketball, like yeah. uh, Michigan state had, three or four guys that had it. So they were shut down for yeah. nearly three, three weeks. And it was, you know, it was more commonplace with, um, with college basketball, which makes sense because they're around a lot more people yeah, um, right. probably on campus. Um, did the NBA, none of the, none of the teams uh, got vac- vaccinated. They, they didn't do any. Well, they didn't vaccinated. do any, The thing is, uh, I'm going to say this, it's kind of disappointing that, you know, they, they've had actually team sessions where they've had vaccinations. There has been yeah. some, some of these teams have done it, but none of them, to my knowledge, have done it publicly. And I know this, uh, of course, HIPAA rights for all these players, but I wish at least some of these players, name players, would at least stand out and say, you know what, I got vaccinated. I hope everyone in the community does as well. And I'm just asking and I'm hoping, but I'm not sure if I'm going to, if I haven't seen it already, I don't think I will see it, but L Rob Laker, Tom, I mean, do you think that might be something that the league was hoping that they would do? And, and unfortunately that's not been done as of yet. I, I think it would have been a good message that they would have got, get, gotten across to their fans. It's kind of ironic because the, you see the ads with Bill Russell and, yeah. and other NBA stars, you know, mm-hmm. announcing that they've gotten it. Yeah. But the other side of it is, you know, you you hear about the, I mean, the odds, the odds are even, for example, the J and J vaccine, the odds are greater that you're going to get COVID than you're going to die of a blood clot. Yeah. I mean, because um, it's, but, it, it but was it's still, it still raises the whole issue that we, we politicized. Yeah. We politicized the vaccination issue, just like we've done almost everything in the world, you know? Everything is now turned into a political statement one way or another. Um, and then unfortunately, you know, influences people, makes people have doubts and so forth. So it's a tricky, it's a tricky situation. Um, I had heard that the Lakers were planning, or I'd, maybe I'd heard that the Warriors were planning to uh, do a joint vaccination with the players and one of the major drugstores, Walgreens or somebody in the Bay area. I heard a couple of them were trying to also negotiate once where they're doing it with their arena personnel, you know, uh, club workers, Mm -hmm. uh, executives, you know, people, the part of the organization as well. But you have to feel that, um, you know, it's, it reminds me in some ways of, of when they were trying to make sure that all the NBA players voted, you know, and there was all of this pressure on everybody to, you know, come on, do your duty and vote so that we can say, hey, 100% of the Lakers voted or 100% of the Bulls voted and so forth. Well, and I mean, I, and, it, and there well, was a point because... in time when I thought that there was they were trying to do this with the vaccinations to, you know, to try to set a thing. But obviously some players have opted. I mean, we knew Dwight Howard didn't want to be vaccinated. He's the only one that I can remember publicly stating it. But but obviously and, there's and LeBron some... said it's been a family decision. It's a family yeah. decision for him. So, I mean, you, yeah. you interpret that any way you want, but you have to respect yeah. his privacy on that. Yeah. So I think that there, what's happened no, is people. there's, it's just like with the military. I mean, the Marines, what's well, like 40% of the Marines refuse to get vaccinated. Well, the thing is, it's, well, I say this way. I just want to say this quick, real Rob, because remember in the, in the bubble, I mean, there were only a small amount of individuals that were actually registered to vote. So they had to go ahead and get everybody together and get them registered to vote first. That's how they found out exactly, you know, to vote. So that's how they, they all they've all voted with with the vaccines 
like I said, because they're not in the bubble. They're not all talking to each other. Right. And I think at least if there's one star or two stars, major no, no, that would be out in front and center of this, that would help a lot to, yeah. to the communities out there, you know, of any ethnic background to anybody that's that's reluctant on it. I mean, L. Rob, I'll ask you this. I mean, would a star from today's game help any type of audience out there get vaccinated or at least be some way to say, you know what, if, if that star, X star, you know, whatever, all star, is getting vaccinated, maybe I should do it to do. Maybe I should do it too. Absolutely. You know, being in marketing, um, influencer marketing is, is is huge. So people look to people that they believe in, that they trust, that have influence over them. And yeah, they, they a lot of people make decisions based on that. Or if you're on the fence, that could be what what um, pushes you over. I think, you know, your family and, and close friends would probably be first, but also, yeah, um, you know, star athletes and other um, people that you hold in high esteem definitely can influence you. I will say this, you know, I mean, it's not all political reasons why I know it's a great deal of people, you know, of course it was politicized and it's a lot of people that decided not to do it and will won't do it because of political reasons. But like, I mean, I haven't been vaccinated and I know Tom was very persuasive and telling me all the reasons why I should. I mean, I just don't get, I mean, I don't, I don't, never got a flu shot. I, I just don't do the vaccination. So it's really not, uh, uh, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm well, not, I mean, not, a, I'm not a, a, a Trump fan by any stretch. So it's not for political reasons, just a decision I made. And, um, but others in my family have. And so, I mean, I think it's a personal decision, but I do believe in being safe and making sure I um, try to protect people as much as I possibly can. But um, so I understand why people may not want to get it. So. Well, I'm just going to say this, is that, okay, we're, and we're getting off the, the tangent here, but I wanted to go quickly into vaccines. Before we close it's, it's very real. and It's, it's very real. But, I mean, it's, it's, it's what the, what I think, you know, if one of these NBA All-Stars went out in forefront, like you said, I think it would help tremendously. But the, like you said with the flu shot, uh, the flu shot doesn't get rid of or doesn't prevent you from getting the flu 100%. No. It just reduces your chances of getting the flu same thing with with the coronavirus vaccine. It doesn't get a hundred percent rid of that chance. In fact, we're seeing now the CDC reported that there was like three thousand cases of getting what they call the breakthrough. Yeah. Uh, where much better than the flu vaccines, which yeah. are like fifty percent effective. Yeah, and, and ninety percent effective. You know. Yeah, exactly. And we're talking about out of the over a hundred million people that have already been vaccinated, to at least once that three thousand have been, or, you know, already gotten it, and that's that's mm. those are pretty good odds. Same thing with the J&J. Yes, six people have unfortunately uh, gotten blood clots and one has passed away from it. But that's out of the, what, millions that have already been vaccinated with the J&J. So, I mean, you have to look at it in those perspectives yeah. one way or the other. But in L. Rob's case, I mean, for, for anyone in the African-American community, you, you have to go ahead and say, you know what, I understand your hesitancy because of the fact of what happened during, what was it, World War II, with uh, as far as right. going to, in, as, was it or was it earlier for as far as for syphilis testing and things like that? Tuskegee, the Tuskegee experiment. Yeah, the Tuskegee yeah. experiment. Yep, that, it, it, I mean, that, it started then, but yeah, that lasted all the way up until about the 70s. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, there's a layer of mistrust there. That's understandable. Uh, you know, there's, if anybody there, tells there, there, there are movies out right now talking about how vaccination, I mean, there must at least be a dozen sci-fi movies where the zombie apocalypse and other, you know, end of the world scenarios are all caused by a measles vaccine that they are, a cancer vaccine that they've the, developed. The Will Smith. That everybody uh, takes movie. and it kills 90% of the population. So, yeah. you know, there's all of these scary things. The thing I think is fascinating about this whole thing, and we're starting to see it in the NBA with respect to like the Lakers. If you wanted to go to the Lakers game, you either A, had a vaccination proof, or B, you took the test that they sent you when you got your online tickets to prove that you didn't have the coronavirus. So this whole idea of a vaccine, vaccine passport is going to be something that is going to, I think, stimulate a lot more people to, to actually get vaccinated and it may or not at least be get tested because employers can require you yeah. to be for the job you can do that private private outlets schools, not the state, schools the state can do or federal. 
Yeah. Um, and and there, there's, there's all sorts of programs going on now where different agencies and so forth are trying to develop these vaccination records. And then, you know, I've had the two Pfizer's, my wife's had the two Moderna's. We've been notified already that there are going to be follow-up shots. Yeah, booster I mean, shots. They're turning these into subscriptions that you're going to be signed up we'll for. We're taking life. shots for the rest of our, our lives, gentlemen. You are, you are. Yeah, and you can see the you can see the yeah. Pfizer and Moderna executive sitting there saying the best way to monetize anything is to turn it into a subscription. Well, I mean, because there's all booster shots, because there's variants, because there's are going to be new variants coming virus. along. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the the CEO of Pfizer already said this week that you will most likely, in fact, that means yes, you have to get revaccinated or get a new yeah. shot, uh, a booster shot of some type within the next twelve months. And there's so, and there's the difference. There's the difference, Lee, between the flu shots, you know, because the flu shots only eliminate fifty percent of the chance of catching the flu, yeah. and people don't catch the flu like they do coronavirus and these new very, very virulent strains that are extremely contagious that are going to probably continue to pop up. Pretty soon you're going to be in a situation where you may decide yourself that what if your employer now says, okay, you got to have a test every day or a vaccination. Because a private, well, hold on, because the private outlets can do that. Yeah. States have been very shy, and actually Florida and Texas have outright said no vaccine passports for them. Very few states are actually thinking about it or pondering it. I think Hawaii is one of them that is. And President Biden has said outlay. You want to go to a Laker going. game? You want to go to a, a distance game? You want to go to a concert? It's going to be, yeah, it's going to yeah. be, it's going to be a lot of events. And I know a lot of uh, colleges have already said, hey. I mean, and I, and frankly, if you want to stay on campus, would, would you go to a U2 concert or or a, or a, a big concert with crowded people in indoor situation? Man, uh, I, I mean, yeah. if I knew everybody was vaccinated or had tested positive or tested negative, yeah. you know, and had to do that and pass that, then I might be willing to do that. But the thing is, with testing negative, you have to go ahead usually and pay for those those tests as well, opposed the, to a vaccine. The, that's, the that's, NBA that's, teams are giving free. them out. The Warriors. The Warriors and Lakers send the tests automatically oh, really? when you get okay. your ticket. Yeah, yeah. Most people get free testing still. It's still yeah. pretty accessible. There's either gonna be there's gonna be a combination of vaccine passports and massive testing, you know, yeah. for pre-event testing for things. Well, I'll tell you what, and we've gotten such great responses here. Felix Vincent, you stay safe as well. Uh, I just want to say when it comes down to what I've experienced, you know, when I usually have the flu shot, I still get the flu, but it seems to like, like it's supposed to downplay those symptoms for the most part. What I've noticed over though, since I, we've had this pandemic and I'm not trying to say, you can read into it what you want. And I know people, especially today on Capitol Hill, they were arguing about it is regarding the mask issues and whatnot. I just know since I went to mask, double mask is on nature. Uh, I've been a little bit as far as staying away from those colds and those flus a little bit better than I have been than I normally. I know this winter they talked statistically how far down we were as far as people getting the flu because a lot of that people speculate is because of the mask wearing. And nor am I saying that we're going to go ahead mask wearing until the end of time. I, I don't want to say that at all. But I'm just saying right now people need to think smart and and do what's best for them as far as from a safety and health standpoint. And and. Again, I'm not trying to go ahead and say one way or another you should vaccinate or not, but if you do, we can get this thing sooner done. Uh, that's the only thing I want to say. Well, the closer we are to herd immunity, the better we get. And we're right now, we're not on a path to herd immunity. It's still going to be bouncing like a ping pong ball off of us, you know, as much as possible because this, you know, and it's going to mutate and all that nine yards. So, I mean, it's up to everyone else out there what they want to do and how they want to protect themselves against this, this virus because it is real. And it's still out there, but that's up to you to, uh, as far as how at best you want to see fit for your health long term. Yeah, I feel bad for our poor governor here in Michigan. Yeah. The, uh, she's good. Uh, she's had a rough. She's had a she's rough. Done the right things, but it hasn't worked. Yeah. yeah, and then now you know. I know she wanted to kind of shut down for a few weeks, but it's just 
you know, after what she got after last year when how you know the rough time she had last year, so yeah. she can't she can't she's not anything is not going it's just not going well for her. Yeah, death, just, death, uh, death threats last year, so yeah, yeah. she was, got kidnapped almost got kidnapped last yeah, year. Yeah, so. very 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 real for her. Last year. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so. what's kind of funny is that uh, after I got my second shot, I decided okay. I'm going to leave the garage and not put, put the exercise bike in storage, get out and back, start hiking again. And so I've been going and hiking three miles every day. Um, and uh, that's wearing a mask. So the first day I wore the mask all the way down and all the way back. And man, that was really difficult. Let's see, that's the other thing they're doing. Studies so the next now, day, you know, and, and so gradually, and then I read this article where a guy said, you know, he he explained exactly what I was going through. He says, he says, you know, we're all out there on the bike paths and the hiking trails, wearing our KN95 masks, and uh, dropping our mask down, and then as we come upon another group of people, we're putting our masks up, and then we mask down, and I found now I'm. You know the path, bike path has enough room where I can be six feet away from anybody else. I just keep my mask down all the time now, unless I run into somebody on the same side of the bike path. Well, and they're uh, doing the studies now that say that you know it's, it's for outdoors. Risk. It's it's yeah. the outdoors yeah. thing. But when you have a mask on, it restricts your airflow, and so they're you know they're trying to yeah, judge exactly how that affects your heart rate and all. There's just no way right of, of doing things at, at this point yeah. in time, but. Please do what you can to be safe out there. That's all we recommend. We're going to go ahead and get off that soapbox for now. Mm. But, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could tell we were doing this, A, because we want the best for you out there as far as your health and safety because we truly care about you. Second is the Lakers. You don't want to do this Boston forever. <laughs> no. Well, I want to That's say the right. second the second part is that the Lakers lost to Boston. Had they been had they beat Boston, we would still be talking till about till next Tuesday. But, Again, like here, I, have a quick, I have a quick question. I have to get to shut down. Well, hold on. Let L. Rob speak. Go Sorry, ahead, L. go ahead, L. No, I said, and see, we want the league. We want the season to play out. LeBron <laughs> doesn't have too many more years. We can't have uh, a missed opportunity here. Yeah, we don't want a third COVID season. Yes, but Laker Tom, what what are you working on? And I know you I was, had a well, I, there, there was an interesting post that I thought was good, and I posted it on Laker Alex. Uh, dot com and I wonder what you two guys feel. The question was is if the if the Celtics and the Clippers were to meet in the NBA Finals, who would you root for? <laughs> Ooh boy! Oh man! Well, I'd have to cover it because I'm I'm committing to another uh, postseason of covering every playoff game, but I'd make it like ten minutes probably. So who are you gonna, who who would you root for though? Oh, I'd root for pop culture because I'd be watching pop culture. No, today. come on, Gerald. You gotta make a choice. I voted, I voted I'd root for the Celtics, actually. Uh no, that, I can't do that. Celtics, another champion that gives the Celtics eight that gives them the break the tie. No, I can't. I'm not I know, but I just can't root for the Clippers. Uh, you know man. what? I would say I would after I'll tell you what, I've told you the story before where we went draft night, me and a friend to the LA Sports Arena when uh, Danny Manning got uh, got drafted number one and they were there for the you know they had they had this big party and we went in there with Lakers jerseys and we were laughing at them but they had all this free food and stuff like that because they were so hopeful they would turn around the franchise and they've done that already 50 times over the course of their their <laughs> you know they've done that so many times over the course of their lifetime you feel sorry for them at the, some point so if that was the case and they both had the final I would have to say the Clippers also because I like Ivica Zubats and I think they I'm should the Yankee have been rooted for the Red Sox before. So I, I theoretically, I, I always stick with the league that my team is in. I enjoy, However, I just can't stand the Clippers. I enjoy. I will angry. feel sorry for the Clippers, you know, and, and I don't feel sorry for them. I'd no, like them to be in misery like for the them. next 50 like years. Them, so I, yeah. I'd that say of the, two, if, you, if you had to twist, if you had to twist my, my pinky on it, I'd probably say the Clippers, but. I don't want to do that either. As I, I maybe just go ahead and just uh, watch it. And, you well, know, what was your vote, Lee? Or something. I, 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 um, but I still, I couldn't root for Boston, though. I, I couldn't. <laughs> so I, I have to. But, I mean, I really, I, I still got visions of Paul G George dancing with Russell Westbrook on the night he's supposed to be signing with the Lakers, and they show him partying. <laughs> and, and he talked about how much he really The best answer that I got, the best me. answer I read on Twitter was some guy said, I'd root for a natural disaster. 
Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it might be the one time we, we root for COVID to shut, shut the league down. Oh, my gosh. You guys are awful. But, again, uh, it, that, that's something that just rip, rips at your heart, you know? If the yeah, Clippers it, and the Celtics were in the finals, who would you root for? Fortunately, we don't have to worry about that, at least not. Yeah. I mean, we know Boston won't be making it this year. so <laughs> Yeah. Neither will the Clippers. I, I'd root for the Avengers because I would probably be watching an Avengers movie instead. But once again, it's the Lakers, 121 to 113. They lost tonight to the Boston Celtics. Unfortunately, the Celtics, too much for tonight. Too much AD Jalen Brown. Back. AD's coming back. AD is on the way back, possibly as early as next Wednesday. So we'll wait and see. But big games coming up here this weekend. It starts with Saturday's game against Utah and then a Monday game against Utah as well. So hopefully the Lakers can compete. We're not counting on much, but we are, you know, you never know. That's why they play the games. Yep. So we didn't think last last Saturday they would do well against Brooklyn. So maybe that's, that's two true. in a row for the – That is true. The Saturdays. Saturday win, games. Win, one. win, 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 lose one. Win, win, lose one. Yeah, so is they're, they're due to win one. They're due to win one. So we'll wait and see. But we will be here hopefully a lot cheerier, hopefully a lot happier. We'll get off the vaccine soapbox this next time around. So we promise. We promise. We won't be on the vaccine soapbox for this ep uh, next episode. But – it is the Lakers fast break. If you have any questions for L Rob, always go ahead over to uh, uh, always go ahead over to Lakerholics.com for Laker Tom, Lakerholics.com at Laker Tom on Twitter as well. And for us, Laker, uh, Lakers fast break at yahoo.com or at Lakers fast break on Twitter. If you have any questions for us, please catch the great shows that are on the Hoop Heads podcast network. Of course, all the awesome articles from five things with Jamie Sweet, who seemingly is not here today. Sean Grice, our historian, who is seemingly not here today, and I'm throwing some shade on them. I wonder if they if they won, they would have been here probably. <laughs> but you know, go ahead and catch your stuff on Lakerholics.com. Vincent, her, uh, your last time, he's the last comment of the day. Vincent says, "Wait for the storm is coming with AD and LeBron James." <laughs> We're waiting for the storm to come in. We're waiting. We're waiting and waiting. I've got my raincoat on. I'm waiting for so long. You know, I've got even my little floppy hat and my galoshes on because it's just, you know, I'm waiting for the storm to come in. So we are waiting for AD and LBJ. That storm could be coming, at least part of it, as early as Wednesday. But we will be back here Saturday right after the game. Please go ahead and check out all of the stuff we're doing at Lakers Fast Break. I put up a great interview with Stone Hansen on offseason moves and the NBA draft yesterday, so check that out as well. And please, we'll be back here. If you want to go ahead and join us, we'll be back here on Saturday after the game, right here at the Lakers Fast Break Podcast. Thank you, Felix, Albert, and Vincent for watching our show tonight. Have a great weekend, everyone. Stay safe.